So, first home game in uh, SEC play against the top team. I mean, South Carolina's only lost one game. You know, they beat a good Mississippi State team. They're, they're playing well. Uh, you know, they, they took a lot of transfers, and so they're experienced. You know, Clark Cooper, PJ Mag, Miles Stewart, and Paul and a couple of them. So, you know, I, I think it's those without being said that experience helps you win games in college basketball. They're, they're a really experienced group. So, and, and they've got some scoring. I mean, Mitchie Johnson, who was a transfer uh, before that, uh, we recruited him a little bit when he was up a high school player in Ohio. But, you know, him and Mark are two of the top three scorers in the SEC. So they've got tough guard play. We're going to have to do a great job defensively. You know, and this is South Carolina's really good defensive team. I mean, they play a lot slower than we do. Their offense is efficient. Their defense is, is, is very good. I think they're top 20 in the country in scoring defense, you know, holding teams down. So we're going to want to get it up and down. They're going to want to slow it down. You know, we're going to have to do a good job maybe playing with less possessions with how much they score down and being super efficient in the possessions we get. And then we got to do a great job on defense. But, you know, we, we were fortunate enough to escape with a win against Vanderbilt. We're going to play a lot better moving forward to get wins in this league. I think you saw that first weekend there's teams playing some really good basketball in this league. And we, we didn't play particularly well, but we were fortunate enough to get the win. We're going to play a lot better here tomorrow night. Thank you. Coach. Start with Charlie here on the right. Yeah, hey, Coach. You mentioned this being the, the first SEC home game. Looks like you guys had a pretty strong Alabama contingent in Nashville. And just what are you hoping to see from the, the crowd tomorrow night? Yeah, I hope we get a lot of students. I know uh, first class is Wednesday, so I think it's perfect. They can get in. Uh, they got in this weekend or today or tomorrow. Get a uh, good basketball game under their belt before they go to class Wednesday morning. But it'd be great to see a student section back. It'd be great to have a solid for our first home SEC game. We've, you know, it's been a couple of years since we lost uh, an SEC game at home, so we, we didn't lose one last year. So we, we need everybody to come out and just get the energy in the building so our players play a little harder. Our players hopefully will be playing with max effort and giving the uh, fans a show that they deserve to see when they come to watch us play. Jump to the left side, Nick. Yeah, uh, Meechie Johnson, we talked about him, but I think he's top 75 in the country and fouls drawn for 40 minutes. I mean, what stands out about his ability to draw fouls? Yeah, I mean, he's great with his shot fakes. He draws fouls on three, shot fake, get a guy off, go into him, you know, and he, he drives the ball with some force. I mean, he's, you know, Sears maybe drives it a little bit with some more physicality, but Michi's probably a little better at getting guys up in the air on jumpers, like one, twos, threes. And we, our guys got to be disciplined on not find shot fakes, and we, we've had an issue with that in the past, so we've got to be very cognizant of the fact that he's going to shot fake a lot and try to draw fouls and then try it with some physicality and kind of push his way in there, so we got to do a good job of keeping our hands off, not putting our hands in, letting him collect fouls. Stand left side, Joe. First, congratulations on your Packers getting in the playoffs, but secondly, now more importantly, on Saturday you talked about uh, you talked about competitive spirit and, and basically coaching competitive spirit. In what ways are you uh, working or simulating comp uh, that in practice? Yeah, I mean, we our practices are all competitive. I made the point to the guys today last year when we get done with practice. You know, Clowney would always go over to the uh, board and would track blue collar points in practice, and he was you know wanted to be the winning blue-collar points every single day in practice, and then they got other guys competitive, and then Pringles competing with them. Like, like I, we got to get a little bit more of that this year. Like, we need some guys that want to really compete, you know, be the hardest playing guy on the floor every time they're out there. I think Estrada was, Estrada cr crushed everybody today with the blue-collar points in practice. But, you know, we need some guys that really praise other guys' effort plays and then want to, get everybody's effort plays going up with a blue collar play, screen assist, just stuff that, that makes the team better that's not necessarily scoring. We need everybody to start recognizing more, want to do it more, be a great teammate, just things like that we're trying to emphasize. Tony? 
you guys have had such a tough schedule, but is there still an acclimation period with so many newcomers coming into the SEC, or do you guys kind of already handle that? Man, I, it's a good question. I would think by this point in the year we should be acclimated to playing with each other, but you know sometimes it looks like maybe we're not. Now we've also had, you know, we had a lot of injuries in the summer and the off season. Guys weren't healthy, and we you know we still got we haven't had a lot of injuries where guys are missing games. We've got guys missing some practices, so I, I now I'll say the new guys don't know what SEC play is all about either. There's going to be an acclimation period. To, like, these conference games are tough games. Like Vanderbilt, you know, according to the net, or Ken Tom or whatever analytics sites you go to is, was the worst team in our league. It, it's not an easy place to get win. And Stackhouse is a good coach, and they run good stuff. I think our guys realize that. You know, we jumped on them early, up 18 with 10 minutes to go in the first half, and guys thought it was going to be a, a breeze, and it ends up coming all the way down to the last possession of the game. It, it, it's not a breeze. So no games, whether they're home on the road, and you saw it with Arkansas has been one of the better teams in our league since I've gotten this league. And, you know, they're at home and took a big out. The, the, the conference games are tough games no matter who you play, whether they're at home or on the road. I mean, you look at LSU, Texas A&M, another one that – so our guys got to figure that out. There, there's no – there's no easy games, whether it's a home game, road game. You know, we made it look easy last year at times, but it's that's not the way it, it typically is. It's you know, our guys got to get a little bit more killer instinct, and they got to understand that every possession is going to be a tough possession. And as soon as they let their foot off the gas, other teams going to make a run. And that's, that's what happened to us Saturday. Let's go, Katie. You basically just hit on this, but do you feel like Saturday was kind of a wake-up call for the new guys that haven't played in the SEC and like about how tough the league is? Yeah, I hope it's a wake-up call for everybody, including the returners, because we all contributed to that uh, collapse after you know we get up 33 to 15, we're up 18, and you know we're we're humming, humming along pretty well in the first 10 minutes, and then ball quit moving. Guys got a little bit selfish with it, in my opinion. We didn't score in the last four minutes of the half. You know, we started driving it into double teams and tight quarters and turning it over our 16 turnovers, hurt our defense and our offense both. So I hope it's a wake-up call for everybody that you have to keep playing the right way no matter what the score is because stuff can flip in a hurry. Let's finish up with Charlie here. You guys have a common opponent in Clemson. Just what did you see from watching tape that South Carolina did well and maybe didn't do well against them? Yeah, I, they, uh, Clemson beat us by, I think, eight here, and they only beat – South Carolina by five, I believe it was at Clemson too. So, uh, I, you know, we, we play differently, so it's hard to get too much from it. But I, you know, it is the one common one, so you want to see what you can get out of it. I, they they'll post up a lot more than we will. South Carolina will. They obviously play a lot slower. You can see that. They they do want to take a lot of threes. You know, we didn't do a great job uh, with PJ Hall in the post. But we're going to have to do a lot better job with B.J. Mack in the post than we did with B.J. Hall. I think we've gotten a better plan knowing our personnel since then. We've also gotten a little tougher, hopefully. We also got to do a better job running them off the three-point line. I felt like we let like a Joe Girard get off, you know, particularly in the second half of that game where we, we meet you Johnson's not going to be able to just come off ball screens and hit jumpers and we're going to be in trouble. Like, Joe Gerard did. So I think, you know, we got to do a better job making sure the other team's best players aren't the ones beating us. So we didn't we do a good job at that against Clemson. Like, their better players came out and, you know, got better than their average and they beat us. Like, we got to keep Michi Johnson, BJ Mack, Cooper, those guys. We got to, Stu, Stu can really shoot it. We got to make sure those guys aren't the ones beating us. We got to make sure that their role players are having to make extra plays if they're going to beat us. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, thanks. Appreciate it.